G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip we'll be looking at a couple of design mistakes we made when building this chop and flip aquaponic system. So before we get cracking on the clip, I just thought I'd let you folks know who are new to the channel that I have a load of aquaponic design and how-to clips and there will be links to playlists in the uh, description down below and as well at the end of the clip. And also too, it'd be fantastic if you could hit that subscribe button down there and then check the bell icon once it appears and that way YouTube will know to send you notifications as soon as I upload a clip on aquaponics to our YouTube channel here. Now, Let's have a look at the system. So the system itself is a pretty basic chop and flip aquaponic system and you can check that little um, clip out up there if you want to know how these are actually made to begin with. It's basically a cut down version of one of these IBCs. Obviously this one's a fish tank for the expansion we're doing on this system. But what you would normally do is chop the top off, flip it over, hence chop and flip. The bottom becomes the fish tank and the top becomes the grow bed as you can see here. And now when we built this, uh, we were in a bit, little bit of a hurry. I was actually trying to finish it off for that um, clip that I linked to back there. And as a result, I made a couple of mistakes. And I thought I'd just um, fill you in on those mistakes now because they all need to be undone before we can expand this into a three bed system. Uh, one of the first things I did wrong was situate this cage or the actual basin correctly. As you can see, we have a little bit of rust here and the top rail is actually rusted all the way through and has cracked. Uh, what's happened is a lot of the water that has been splashing in from that little pressure relief outlet there um, splashed up and wet this timber, which in turn allowed this metal here to rust. Um, since then, obviously, it's been changed the way the water's flowing into the tank. And yeah, we haven't had an issue with it wetting up there. Uh, we have had a bit of an issue with it wetting here. So I've changed the nozzle direction yet again. And as you can see, we have a little bit of rust build up here from where this timber was sitting before we moved it the other day. So definitely a bit of a design flaw there. Uh, the reason we have this little bit of an outlet here is to relieve some of the pressure from the pump, mainly because we have an oversized pump delivering water to um, that corner of the grow bed up there. Now, the idea was uh, from the get-go to build a larger system onto this one. So that's why I oversized the pump and yeah. Also too, if there were fish in here, that would help to oxygenate the water some. It's just a handy little trick to do if you do end up with an oversized pump. So yeah, um, letting water splash around too much, and especially wetting your wood, um, can a little bit lead to um, issues like this. Another problem we have with the cage is it is sitting directly on the soil itself down in there. Now, the reason why I decided to set it on the soil was we wanted the base here to elevate the grow bed itself away from the top of the, um, the fish tank here. The reason being is this cage <laughs> is actually an old wicking bed cage. Um, wicking beds, if you don't know, they're a way you can sub-irrigate soil beds. Um, I've got clips on them if you want to suss them out, but back to aquaponics. This is a cage from an old wicking bed, so it was never quite cut uh, tall enough to allow a little bit of a gap from the top lip of the fish tank to where we would then put the cross beams and then the grow bed itself. A uh, little bit of a design fault. I'm actually rectifying that with this cage here. I brought a spare cage around and it will be cut higher. So once we remove that sump tank, or well, what will become a sump tank in the new system, um, it will go into here. This bar here will be the top and there will be a gap between the top of there and the tank itself to be able to put pipe work through or maybe some filter bags or whatever we want um, to have access to in the sump tank down the bottom. So we're just around the front of the fish tank here and as you can see the tray itself is sitting on soil which is not a good idea. There's moisture under there and that tray is going to end up rusting out. What we should have done is the same as we've done for the new fish tank. Got some hardwood sleepers and sat this little tray here on top of the sleepers so they're off the soil. So that's one of the things we'll be doing uh, once we empty out this tank. Um, I dare say there will be a lot of rust in this tray so we'll discard the tray and then, um, yeah, pop in the new tray from that IBC over there and stick the hardwood underneath it. And from this angle here, you can also see another issue, a load of algae that has built up on the tank walls. And that is because um, these side, this side of the tank was never covered. There is a little wooden partition down that side. 
and on the back side over there there's um, there's been something blocking the sunlight from hitting it so there's been no algae growing there but just here on this side here uh, it gets a little bit of morning sun so that uh, encourages the algae growth uh, if you don't want to clad your tank there's other things you can do uh, with our systems at home i've wrapped it with sarking which is a silver insulation sheeting you can also paint these tanks as well and there's a couple of products on the market that will bond to plastic and that will create a coating that will stop the uv light getting through and allowing algae to grow in your nutrient rich water and the same goes for the grow beds as well you really uh, really does pay to have these covered up as well because there will be nutrient rich water sitting in here and as the sunlight comes through, it will um, allow algae to grow on the insides. Now, looking at the grow beds, uh, these appear to be going okay, but there's a few things here that um, I'd suggest mum do differently next time. Uh, well, actually, once we rebuild it. And that's not to have long growing plants like these two rosemaries. There's one there and one in this corner here. They were started by cuttings in here and they've just absolutely gone burko over the last couple of years. Try and get you a better look at how big they are. Um, so they've done really well. The one issue is though, they will have fairly large root masses down there in the clay. Those roots can form a very efficient filter, binding the clay together and stopping fresh water from flowing in between the clay and the roots, and then out to be cycled down to the fish tank again. That cluster of roots and clay can cause an anaerobic situation to evolve. Basically no oxygen rich water getting in there. The bacteria is starved of oxygen, so they start stripping it from the NO3, which is nitrate, and it reverts back to nitrite and nitrite if released into the water and gets back to the fish tank where there's um, fish it can cause brown blood disease or otherwise known as nitrite poisoning killing your fish there are measures you can put in place to protect your fish but that's another clip if you want a nice clean efficient running system i would advise not to having um, a plant to create a large root mass so mum and dad have got um three uh, three varieties in here they've got the rosemary there They've got a rhubarb here, which is looking a little bit wilty today, but then again, it is a little bit warm. But these guys can get rather large root masses. And around the other side here, past this other rosemary, we have a curly leafed parsley uh, that is growing right above the inlet. There's, um, this filter's not in use at the moment, so we can turn it around. There's an inlet just down in there. And I would dare say that the root mass of this parsley is creating a very efficient solids filter down there, collecting all sorts of gunk within it. For me, the ideal sorts of plants that you want to grow in a media-based grow bed is something that's fairly quick turnaround. I mean, a tomato is fine because it's only, only going to be growing one season, then it'll die off in most climates. Uh, the same with your sweet peppers or capsicums and chilies and eggplants. Um, they do get rather large root masses, but they do tend to die off in most climates once summer's ended. But for our climate here, I'm going to suggest mum just do her leafy greens, uh, maybe a celery plant in there, um, some Asian greens, some lettuce, and that sort of thing. So there's a couple of bees buzzing around here, so I'll try not to disturb them. But uh, another thing down here in the bed I just wanted to run through is um, solids filtration. Uh, we'll have a look at the little solids filter in a minute. But as you can see, there is a little bit of muck down in here. It's decomposing um, roots from plants and the organic matter that's um, landed in here from the nearby trees. Uh, some of it will also be fish waste in a system with fish. Um, so you definitely want to try and prevent too much from building up in here. And that's why I'd recommend a canister filter or something similar on a little chop and flip jobby like this. I mean, I do know people who have run systems. I've done it myself in the past and I've mucked out all the solids that were building up in the grow beds. Um, but it can be uh, quite a time consuming job. And it's, I think it's just easier to remove them before they get here by including some sort of solids filtration. These bees are very busy. And while we're around this side, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a quick look at this, another cautionary tale. Um, I have popped a uni seal in this little um, filter. It's a little canister filter. Basically, the water enters up the top here, goes down the bottom, and then the water slowly moves up through a media inside, which collects the particles. And this one here, I have a little um, pipe there. Where are we? Just down in there. Uh, that collects the water, and it runs down into the grow bed. Now, this plastic here isn't UV stabilised. And after a while, she's started to develop a split around where the uni seal is because that is a rubber seal. The pipe being pushed there has exerted pressure on there. And just as the plastic has deteriorated, it caused a bit of a split. I would definitely recommend either wrapping this uh, or using a drum, uh, like the drum we're using for the new solids filter for the expansion that is UV stabilized. Or alternatively, uh, just like you can with your grow beds down here, you could um, spray paint this or get some sort of paint on there that's going to adhere and 
stick and that'll block the UV rays from hitting the plastic and degrading it. So uh, just a bit of a cautionary tale there. Um, definitely pays to have solids filtration, but if you are, make sure it's in a container that's not going to deteriorate and break over time. So there's a couple of things I'd definitely do different next time round. But as I did mention, we've got the fish tank just over there and we've got a drum for a filter and we will be expanding on this system. Hopefully this weekend, if I edit this clip and get it up in time for you folks, I'll be back over here Sunday to do some work on it. And yeah, I'll be bringing you update clips showing you how you can expand a chop and flip into a larger three bed split flow or maybe even a single loop system. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out a clip I did recently explaining the different types of systems that are common in backyard aquaponics, you can check out that little clip up there. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there if you want to be uh, notified when I post those clips on the improvements here on our YouTube channel. Also too, before I go, a uh, huge shout out and thanks to all the folks over on our new membership uh, website. It's called Farm Your Own Yard. Um, it's got the same membership tiers as I've had in the past for UX supporters just waiting for me to create my own site. So there'll be a link in the description and hopefully at the end here to a page where you can suss it out. Uh, one of the reasons why I decided to um, create my own site is I want to be able to host a downloadable content. Uh, for the time being, they will be perks for people who support the channel. And in the end, I wouldn't mind trying a bash at some um, tutorials or um, a couple of short courses for folks to um, learn how to make their own aquaponic system step by step is the first idea I've got. So. There you go. Uh, I do hope that this clip has helped you folks out some and that your own gardens are booming and I'll catch you next time. Cheers folks. Have a top one. And I just found a snail. Dinner anyone? <laughs>